Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 9th, 2017. I told you guys I would be doing some tech gifts, and at the end of this report I have uh, 25 best tech gifts to uh, put under the tree. I'm not going to go over all 25 of them. I'll just go over about the first five or so. And I'd also like to give a shout out to my friend, uh, Muzzle Mike, for doing the ITL report and giving me bunches of shout outs too for the uh, TDD report. I will be taking a break for Christmas Eve and Christmas weekends, uh, or Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve weekends coming up uh, for the TDD report. There'll be two weekends where there won't be a report, but um, as usual, I'm sure probably Muzzle Mike, unless he changes his mind, will be doing an ITL show. So um, it's a variety show. He does a lot about technology too, especially if you're looking for reasonably priced uh, cordless microphones and wireless microphones. He would be the person to talk to because he's tested a lot of the more inexpensive models. Now, we're not talking the $250, $300 models. We're talking the under $100 models. So if for some reason you have an interest in that for your audio to make your videos better and want to go wireless, he would be the person to talk to about that. So, First up from sciencemag.com. And all the links to all the stories, as usual, will be down in the comments below along with the link to the uh, ITL channel, Muzzle Mike's channel. Researcher in Swedish fraud case speaks out. I'm very disappointed by my colleague. Uppsala University in Sweden released a long-awaited claiming damning report yesterday about two researchers who published a high-profile study about the dangers of microplastics, particles less than 5 millimeters in sight, to fish in science last year. An investigation by the UU's Board of Investigation of Misconduct and Research found that postdoc, and I'll try to pronounce this right, Una Lonstedt fabricated data for the paper purportedly collected at the AR research station on Gotland, an island in the Baltic Sea. Her supervisor, Peter Eklov, bears responsibility for the fabrication as well, the board said, but his behavior didn't meet UU's criteria for misconduct at the time the paper was published. I guess um, with new regulations now, it would today under new regulations meet the criteria for misconduct. Both researchers were found guilty of misconduct for not obtaining a permit from an ethics review panel before conducting the experiments on Gotland. Accusations against the duo were leveled a week after the paper was published by Frederick Jutfeldt of the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondenhelm and you use Joseph Sundland with the help of five colleagues elsewhere in the world. So yeah, um, this kind of really flies in the face of what science should really be all about. This is, and it, and it also kind of hurts for people that are trying to find out if these microplastics and these little plastic particles are causing danger to uh, animals in the ocean and things like that too. So by no means take this to mean that these plastics are, are all of a sudden safe. It just means that their study doesn't really give us any information as to whether these plastics are safe or in what ways, shapes, or forms they are. Because if you just make up data to fit whatever you believe should happen, it, it's useless science. So why it's important to be honest and honorable with science and be willing to do experiments even if they find the exact opposite of the results uh, there's always the possibility that if you think plastics are dangerous, you could find, at least for, from the um, types of testing you do, that there's no proof whatsoever that they do any harm, at least to the extent of what you've tested for. And you have to be willing to do that, to be honest with science. You have to be willing to take the fact that your hypothesis could show, uh, the test results could show the exact opposite of what your hypothesis um, shows. So, you know, just something a little bit more to keep uh, keep in mind. And next up from uh, Gizmodo, and let me get this, let me scroll over here. Scientists observe Earth's mysterious hum on the ocean's floor. People have talked about that too. I've been following this ever since the uh, Taos hum and other different low-level, low-tonal hums that people have been hearing all around the world. Now, I'm not sure if this would fit exactly into that criteria because I guess this is even a much lower frequency than audible frequencies, but you never know, too, due to harmonics and uh, sound traveling through different substances and stuff like that. So um, here it says, even in the absence of giant earthquakes, this planet is still emitting a quiet hum. Researchers have measured it at ocean depths. Scientists have been aware of this quiet hum for decades, and many seismic stations have measured it on the planet's surface. No one has measured it underwater during periods without earthquakes, though. That's been far too there's been far too much background noise. Now a team of European scientists have made that measurement using ocean bottom seismometers. The project to measure the hum began with 57 seismometers dropped over a 4 million square kilometer area in the Indian Ocean recorded from late 
2012 to late 2013. Now these frequencies operated between 2.9 and 4.9 mhz. They have millihertz here, but it's not really. It's mic. I think it's something like micro millihertz. They. I actually looked up another article because 2.9 to 4.5 millihertz. That's up in the radio spectrum, but it's a uh, something like micro millihertz or something like that. It's a very very low frequency. Um, like a wave traveling once every few minutes. Music notes have frequencies a million times higher than that. That's what clued me in that they made a mistake on this Gizmodo report too, that um, it's actually way, way down below uh, sonic vibrations that a, nor a normal human can hear. But actually studying the hum can have important scientific uses. There are way more seismometers on land than there are on the ocean. And you can also, there's a click to the link uh, from National Geographic too that you can also click on and get a little more information to it. But they don't at all tie this into the thing called the Taos hum and it's kind of interesting because I've been to Taos myself and I'm usually pretty sensitive to unusual noises myself my hearing especially when I was younger I had very sensitive hearing and I had been to Taos New Mexico at least two times if not three and I uh, never really heard anything out of the ordinary that my ears could pick up or detect so I don't really know what's going on there so Let's skip ahead to the 25 best tech gifts to put under the tree this holiday, and I will give you the first five. And what they're doing is they're going from lowest price to uh, highest price. So these gifts will be, the ones I'll be uh, talking about will be the uh, $25 and less ones, pretty much. And then if you continue on and wish to click on the link and see all 25, you'll see some in $50 and above range after the ones I talk about. So anyway, let me click the link here. Let's go to the first one. This one's a camera lens kit for about $10. And it's one of those that uh, has a little clip, and you can clip it onto your um, regular cell phone or probably even a lot of little cameras if they can fit it in there. And it changes over to a, uh, a fish eye lens or a macro lens, and it's just $10. Now, it's not going to probably give you professional, super sharp type of photos, but if you're having a problem during a wide angle or a macro type of lens work uh, because you're camera is just not able to do it and your pictures end up fuzzy this will at least make them noticeably sharper I've seen these kits being used before too and uh, for uh, regular stuff you po post to social websites uh, they are plenty good for that uh, so that's number one number two is okay let me get to it here yeah wireless headphones for twenty dollars these top rated wireless Sports earphones offer up to eight hours of playtime after a single battery charge. Reviewers compare them to similar offerings that are more than six times the price, and they will have a click. You can click to the link that says buy now. So um, I'm not going to click on it right now to tell you the brands and everything like that. You can do it yourself. Uh, they don't really give you a lot of the detail about them until you actually click on the link itself. And then number three is an HD dash cam. Now this is around $24.00. Actually, probably it will be okay for around $24 compared to what cameras used to be, so you'd probably get some pretty decent footage out of it. Probably still, again, won't be the sharpest. It's not going to be comparable to a $300 GoPro, but for being able to, to film uh, uh, dash pictures just to see who is fault in accident or something like that, it says, this camera mounts onto a windshield recording the road as you drive, and the footage is extra handy when a fender bender happens or uh, when you want to relive a particular scenic route. So I imagine it would probably be pretty decent 720p quality at least. 24 bucks, can't beat that. So let's see about number four. Number four is a triple port car charger. This uh, plugs right into your power port, or as we used to call them, cigarette lighters. And it's really nice because the top two uh, ports, uh, USB ports, produce two amps of power, and the bottom one produces one amp power. So you could charge pretty much any any of your uh, larger iPads, your larger Androids, or even a, a super power-hungry Android type phone. Fifteen bucks is all is all this one costs. So let's go to number five. And this is another set. This is a set of uh, Fresh Buds Pro magnetic Bluetooth earbuds for twenty-four dollars, and they also snap together so that they don't want to tend to tangle as much. So I kind of like that idea too. Twenty-four bucks it says get them a pair of techie earbuds without going broke just connect this pair to a smartphone or other bluetooth enabled device for up to five hours of play so very good and then uh, like i said uh, the link will be given below in the description and then you can check out the other um, twenty items or so and they do go up in price i think the next item after this is around uh... fifty bucks or so and uh, goes up from there so anyway that's about it for this week take care everybody i will catch you next week